good morning. Just checking to make sure everything is going correctly. And it is. So. All right. Good morning, everybody. Just do a quick check to see if you can hear me. I think you should be able to hear me well. We switched the headsets today. We're still trying to figure out the best headset to use. Um, so good morning. Um, today is Monday, which is fine. So um, I'm doing my Monday because for the last couple of weekends, I have been doing new client trainings. So I've been busy over the weekend, so I decided to, you know, do some stuff for today. So welcome. My name is Juliette Colora, and I am Colorful Threads. Welcome to my channel. So what we're going to do is today I have a couple of projects that have been requested, one of which is how to attach a patch that has a logo or whatever on it to a hat. So what I'm going to do with this project is now you could use um, brand new hats with brand new patches to um, to do for a client. But the what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some hats that I have that were mess ups um, because things happen so that I can cover, like on this hat, the beginning of my logo, it shifted for some reason. It wasn't, the hoop shifted when it traced or was going around. So it messed up, so I put it in the box and I'm going to cover it with a patch that I can sell. So I'm going to use up and I'll show you. Let's, I want to show you this bin. All right, so this is my bin, and I'm sure everybody's got one of oopsies. These are all hats that have some shape, form, or another um, messed up. So I'm going to try to save some of them because some of them are really nice, cork and stuff. So I'm going to try to save them by putting a patch and cover over the, the messed up logo, creating something that I can actually sell instead of putting this into the landfill. That's why I've been saving it because I knew I would come up with a project and I'd have enough to sit and actually make a bunch of things eventually. So this is a really good way to keep new products out of the landfill upcycling. So that is one of the projects that we're going to do this morning is that the other thing that we're going to do, let me switch the camera around. I'm my own cameraman, you know. Um, so I'm going to switch to the overhead camera, show you some stuff I have over here. Okay. So over here, we'll move my water cup out of the way. Um, I have a whole, to move my tool bag. Put that over out of the way in case I need it. I have my Madeira charts. To remember that everything is turned upside down. Um, so I have my color charts because what we're going to talk about today as well is metallics. So this is the metallic chart. It's kind of hard to see. Where's the camera? There's the camera. You know, we have your super twists, which are pretty, so it's metallics, regular metallics. Lighting might not be the best. It's kind of reflecting. That's fine. So we're going to do metallics. We're going to talk about metallics, how to get our metallics on the machine, stitching and sewing well, because that's the key, right? Most people hate metallics because they just don't understand how to make them run. So we're going to do that. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Bermelana threads and how to run those, how to get those to stitch and sew. And that's what all of these are. These are all my Bermelanas. So I have those here. And then underneath the Bermelanas, because I just kind of threw everything in a big bin. I even have some variegateds. This one is really pretty. It's black. 
and uh, like orange. That's a variegated one as well. So pretty. Um, so there, um, this one I bought to do a timber wolf design. So it's like a two tone gray. He turned out really cute. More colors, more colors, more colors, lots of colors over here. So we're going to talk about Vermilana, how to digitize for it. So we're going to create a quick little design. We're going to sew that out. I also have all my metallics in here. Um, this one is a really old one. I probably won't use it because it's um, so old and brittle. It just doesn't want to run. So that one will probably go in the trash. Um, but all of these are new. These are actually some samples that I got that I'm going to be handing out to clients from Madeira, which is the needle that you need in order to use it. So we're going to set up some metallics. We're going to sew some metallics. This one, I guess I've scratched the color off of over the years. That's fine. Got a silver, another gold. So yeah, we're just going to do some metallics set up and do some sewing, and then I'm going to have some samples to pass out for everybody. When I see you, maybe I'll save these for the class. Here's a design that um, I stitched out of the Bermelana. This is actually kind of hard to see and get the right angle, but it is looped and raised. This is exactly how you would do like a letterman jacket. So kind of see the indention of its mouth here where it goes down where it actually stitches in the regular poly thread into him. But this is a technique called chenille, which is the same technique you would see used in a letterman jacket where it's raised and kind of carpety, loopy feeling. And we can achieve that on our machine with the Bermelana thread. So we're going to be setting up a design. I'm going to pull up this little bear, which can actually be downloaded. I think Nate Moore developed this bear. So... We're going to work on that. These are some other like samples I have of the Bermelana and the needles, of course. you got to have the right needle. So these are the things that we're going to talk about today and do today. Um, so don't forget to let's switch the camera. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button. Every subscription helps. And... If you like the machine that we're working with today, so we are working on the Melco EMT16X machine. That is the one that I have here um, in the camper. And um, if you like the machine and you want to buy the machine, click the link below, contact Todd Eggersman, and let him know that you saw me. Mention my name, Juliet, and he'll get you set up with a machine. And if you're in the Florida Georgia, South Carolina area, you can also request me as your instructor, and I'll come out and do the two-day getting started training for you. So, um, that, that, um, in the chat, that way, chat, at the top of the chat, I have my link to my PayPal if you would like to donate to today's stream so that I can get a new pair of headsets that's not so crackly. That would be appreciated as well. So, um, all right, let's get started. Let me pull up my other computer and my software, get my machine on. Folder needs to go away. Get that maybe like that. Yeah, that's good. All right, things just kind of pile up. Uh, so we're gonna clean that off here real quick. Box of tissues. Backing and French. All right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. 
coffee was over there on the sink. Okay. All right. What do I have? I have a hoop on here. These are getting ready to do patches. Put that over here with all the patch stuff. We have software open. Let's see if that screen is working. It is perfect. All right. Get my machine on. More hat stuff. We're going to have to put the hat hooping stuff on. Okay, no problem. The other headset that wouldn't work this morning. Okay, that's pretty clean. All right, I think we're ready. Chain is ready. Oh, it helps to plug the machine into the computer. Uh, yep, there's that cable. should have had this set up beforehand. I'm sorry. All right. We are plugged in. We start the software. So this is not acknowledging. That is plugged into the machine. That's connected to that. Yeah, all my connections are done, but it is not communicating with the computer. Hello? There we go. All right. Now we got the machine coming up. Okay. Yay. It worked. And I'm already hot. Let me turn the air on.
Okay. All right. So I um, had a job um, come up with a client to do some patches a couple of years ago. I'm trying to think. It's probably been five or six years ago now. And they were these logoed patches that have the blue, the black, and the red with this wave and this logo. That was the original design. And I had a 1,000 of these made, and then the client backed out without paying the rest of balance. So I now have a 1,000 of these wave looking patches and so I was trying to put something on there that I could sell as a cool looking patch so I put some 420s on there and I went through one day because I had the time and I was just uh, you know trying to upcycle do something with these patches and I made a bunch of them one day of this just 420 on there so I have all these different styles and colors and threads and, you know, so I was going along and did some variegated threads. So I have a bunch of these patches and I think they'll work for most of what I want to um, cover on there. But if not, then I'm going to have to make patches that are a little bit wider, maybe put some sayings or words or something or, you know, fairies or mushrooms or who knows what, um, so I can put fun stuff on the patch before I put it onto the hat. So um, I know that I have a stitch file for this already created because I did a placement stitch and then I stitched this down in order to get my sewing and then I separated it and pulled it apart so that the backing was all gone off of it. Um, can't really see it on camera, but there's like puncture marks from where I stitched it on there and then redid it all. So doesn't matter the shape. Well, sort of matters the shape because you're, you're limited, again, on a hat to the height that you can do of the patch and so forth. But if you know you got a design or if you know you got a patch and you have the size, make sure that the size of the patch is going to fit on the hat like for instance, these two hats here, you got to remember that your low profile hat, whether you're stitching a logo on it or you're putting the patch on there, you're going to be limited in your sewing field by the curve of the hat and how quickly it comes down and affects the top half of the sewing which is probably what happened here is I probably tried sewing a little too high on the hat, trying to get as high as I could, and it failed. So I ended up having to move it lower, which is fine. That's all part of it. Um, so like this one, I think, was just a test, and it didn't quite stitch right here, so I tried moving it to stitch again to try to get my stitching correct before moving on to the actual hat. This is one of the flat build snaps from auto with the cork so that's a really cool hat and I want to try to fix it by covering this with a patch so that I can upcycle this hat so this one however because it is a high profiled hat and comes up very high I can get a bigger patch on the front of it if I needed to for sure um, so just pay attention to the size of your hat um, whether it's a low, mid, or high profile, and how big a patch you're going to be able to achieve on that hat. Okay, so I don't have any other notes. All right. Um. YouTube, all right, I got somebody saying, what time are you going live? YouTube Colorful Threads Embroidery. I'm live now. Join us.
Okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go over to the computer, and we're going to start there so that we can get the file set up and um, the stitch file that we need because we need a placement stitch and we need a tack down stitch. So we're going to switch over to the computer and start doing that. Okay, that is the screen option. Oh, come on. How did I lose the machine? Seriously. All right, let that work. We're going to be in design shop for now anyways. Okay. All right, so here we are in our design shop. So um, we're just going to start from scratch, I think. So what I need is to measure my piece. Switch to here real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm not even going to try to pull up an existing file. And we're going to create this from scratch. So um, this particular patch is a perfect, let's see, two and a half by two and a half inches. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of off the edge, but like that. Yeah, so see, I'm two and a half by two and a half, but that's the outside edge. What I really need to look at is where I want to stitch this on. So it's going to be just maybe inside along the edge of that. And so that's going to put me at... Let's see, if I center this perfect, that's going to be a 2-inch by 2-inch. Yeah, because that will give me here, there, there, and there. So that's going to be a 2-inch square. And I think I'll use white thread to stitch it on. Because that line runs right through where the white is, right through where the white is. Yeah, so I'm going to do a perfect 2-inch square. All right. Okay, now we're on the computer. So the first thing I'm going to set up is a walk normal stitch, which is this little icon that has the walking stitches here. And this is going to be a very simple digitizing thing. So you do not need to have the professional version. You can have just your standard design shop or editor, editor and vector will allow you to create walking stitches. All right, so I know it's going to be two inches. So if I go an inch above center and start my point, I'm just going to go out one inch, down two inches, over two inches, and back up two inches, and back to center. So to connect these two together, to make sure that the connection here is perfect with the walk stitch, I'm going to hold the shift key and enter, which connects it perfect in the center so I won't have a gap or an over uh, line doesn't connect right there. All right, so this is going to be step one. This is what I'm going to stitch onto the hat so that I know exactly where to place my patch. Now, the quick um, so the, now we need the stitch that's going to attach it to the hat. And that can be, if you have it available, highlight your walking stitch on the right-hand side, and you're going to right-click and go down to Duplicate. And that's basically going to take that exact same walk stitch exactly in the same spot and make you another one. And that may or may not be um, the the stitch you want to attach it with. Let's talk about stitch length. So right now, my default stitch length for my walk normal stitches is 20, which is really short. I want it to stitch a little quicker than that. 
So I'm going to change this to 30, which is basically every 3 millimeters it'll give me a stitch. <clears throat> All right. That's going to be my placement. Then the tack down, again, is at 20, so I want that to be a little bit longer of a stitch as well. So I'm going to just bring that up to 30. And I think for attaching it, I want a little bit more than just one walking stitch. So I'm going to change it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me get a drink of my water. <coughs> Hi, Stanya. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> Get my water. All right. So I think I'm going to change my stitch to a bean stitch. And the bean stitch will give me three stitches instead of one. Normal walk stitch just comes across and goes stitch, stitch, stitch. The bean stitch will go one stitch, they'll go back and come forward, giving me three in the place of one, which is going to hold that down very nice and tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so to create the pause that I'm going to need on the computer, I need my second color my second walk bean stitch now, my attachment stitch to be a different color. So with it highlighted, I can just choose another color. That way, when I take it to the machine, I can put a pause between there so that the machine will stop and wait for me to add. Why did I lose communication with my machine? Oh no, I closed the software too? <clears throat> All right, and I didn't save it. Sorry, let me do this real quick again. All right, walking stitch, shift, enter, stitch length. Just going to change it now. Then duplicate that. Make that a bean stitch and a color change. Okay, now let me save it. Pat, patch to inch. Okay. Save. <clears throat> okay. Now I have it saved. Now then. Let's see if we can get this machine to communicate. Turn the air on. Have all these lights on and stuff. It's hot in here. I'm hot. Why is it not communicating? Seriously. Is there a Windows update I don't know about? All right. So, while that's communicating, I'm going to switch this over to the tripod so that we can set up the machine. 
Not the machine. Here I am. All right, we're going to set up the hat driver so that we can hoop this hat. gauge in place because we're going to hope. Okay, I'll put it right here. I have to take mine out and put mine on every time because tiny home living, when you live in a 26 by 8 foot home, All right. Now then, is that communicating it? Not quite. All right. Hoop arms. are off. Okay. Take off my little piece. My hoop on. <clears throat> Extra. And There's eight different channels. There's four channels in the front bushing and four channels in the back bushing. And I can see that it's nice and oily from the last time I did this, so that's good. Maybe I'll wipe some of the extra off. There we go. Not bad. That's good. Perfect. All right, and line up my one spot, and my other spot, <clears throat> connection not found, okay, let's try turning it off. And back on. Okay. That is done. I can move this box now. This is booting up. Okay. You're ready. Over here. So, let's see if I can get the angle good. All right. So, I'm not going to cover in detail my hooping because I have plenty of videos on hooping. You're welcome to go and check those out where we address all kinds of other things in hooping, lining up multiple positions and so forth. Get my clips. Clips are important.
Maybe this Ethernet adapter is starting to die on me. Now it sees the machine. Yay, there we go. All right. Just had to restart everything. Okay. So let's get a hat hoop to real quick. So I know that this is the one that I'm going to be doing for today and covering. Let's see. Maybe we'll do a green one because it's like a camo. Yeah, cause see this will cover that, those other stitches perfectly. But if you were doing a blank hat and attaching it to it, it wouldn't matter your positioning. So we're just gonna get this hat hooped. So this is an unstructured hat. So I'm gonna have a little bit more to pay attention to while I'm hooping it because this thing can go crazy unstructured hats like to go crazy they will go wherever they want to go so you have to hoop them well strap is open we're going to start with our backing remember we need a 19 inch piece of backing especially for these unstructured hats you've got to hoop them all the way around Back to center, flatten out that blue, get it on. All right, so I'm going to look at my seam here. And even though I'm not stitching directly on the side of the hat, I still want to follow that line. with my side because you're attaching and hooping and stabilizing everything right now even right now can affect the crown the crown of the hat back to this side same thing I just kind of do a little fold And this is the one that I did in the other video where it has my line drawn on with a Sharpie so that I can keep my seam straight. Okay. And the last thing is I didn't get out my ruler. I thought I had one here. Oh, I remember because last time I used my Universal Orlando button. That's fine. All we need is a mark for matching, which is right there on the A. Haha. <laughs> and it is right there. Hold that down. Okay. Now then I'm going to come back to the center because I want to make sure that this seam, so I don't know if you can see this. Let me get, zoom in just a little bit, get a little closer. Can you see this? Yeah, see that twist in this unstructured hat? This can cause your designs to not look either centered properly or like the, the logo is stitched crooked because maybe you've got it pulled one side or the other and then you attach it down. It's going to cause that seam to be off. This is the unruly part about unstructured hats. So I need to stand in front and make sure this line comes straight out. And when it comes straight out, I'm just going to kind of massage the hat down. And I'm, I'm going to grip that bar. So I'm coming down, and I'm going to grip that bar. And I'm going to start on the left side, because that's usually where I start from rotate around and I know that this is how that's got to be trapped so I'm going to keep this held pull my clip from underneath make sure that this strap is nice and flat I'm keeping that tight so that I don't lose that seam and I'm going to add my clips this is what's going to maintain that straight line come all the way out to the end of the bar and put my second clip all right 
double check my lines. Yep, still same. Come back over here, get my extra, <clears throat> pull my clip from the back, add it to the top. Here's the all the way to the end, add it to there. Now I know that this hat is stabilized all the way out here, which is what we need because we're going to be sewing up here. Just like that. Perfect. And this logo is not even centered on the hat. Ha ha, it's offset. Anyways, irrelevant. We're going to keep going. Okay, so I'm hooped and ready. I'm communicating and ready. Let's go back to the machine software and get our design set up. Move this camera a little bit. Yeah, okay. Go to the screen. Okay, now let's get our file loaded. Um, first thing I'm going to do before I do that is change my hoop. I'm using the red wide angle cap driver, so my little icon of design is going to be red. If you have the graphite cap driver <clears throat> in hoops, um, your icon is going to be gray. All right, hoop is set. Now let's load our design. Oh, where did I have that saved? That was in File, Save As. So that's in Ah, the G Drive. Couple threads, couple threads, couple threads. App K. Okay. Talk about having it deep. G Drive. Couple threads. Couple threads. Couple threads. Ha. Ah, okay. <clears throat> and then it was App K patches. Ha ha. All right. Um, here's my two by two. Perfect. We'll open that. All right. So there's no like rotating the design or anything like that. I am going to pick my colors because I have to make sure it has an applique stop, but I don't need an applique stop. I just need a pause. Um, let's see. I decided to do this in white because that's kind of the target area of the patch I'm going for. White, white with my paws. Perfect. Colors. Hoop. I'm going to loose it. No, I'm going to leave the 7 here as 7 instead of going up to 10 because it's an unstructured hat. So it's basically like sewing through, you know, some simple fabric. But I am going to lower my speed down. I always like to start at 750. I know that I could probably go at 800 or 850 on this particular kind of hat because the structure and the buckram's not there. But I do like to start at 750 and kind of work my way up or work my way down. Sometimes the hat structure is made of a material that's very abrasive and we need to sew slower. I was actually sewing one of these hats at 550 because the buckram on the back was just so intense. I had to adjust my speed, even using a thicker, heavier, sharp needle. Okay. That is done, that is done, that is done. So this is ready to go. All right. And so it's going to be a quick stitch thing. It's going to take a minute. So I'm not worried about the speed. I'm worried about accuracy. All right. So I'm going to switch back to my tripod now. I'm going to take my hat. I'm going to get it on. Click, 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 click. All right. So now, you know, if you're doing a new hat, you're just going to find your center seam. And I like to go as low as I can on the logo because most of the time you want it nice and tight down on the hat. Um, but in this instance, I'm trying to find the center of this other damaged design. So I'm just going to kind of find that. And I'm going to trace. Just because I need to trace to make sure I'm going to cover that. much better. I need to go to the right a little bit more. Bottom top. Okay, that looks good. So now I have my position on my hat. It traces well. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit the start button. All right, I 
I've got my stitch on there. So the stitch is doing a couple of things. One, it's showing me where to place my patch, but the other thing that that placement stitch is doing is attaching the hat to the backing, stabilizing it so that when it does come back and do the other piece, it's going to hold well. All right, so I'm just going to line this up with my stitches. It's nice and lined up, and I'm going to tape this guy in place because I don't want my fingers in the machine. And I'm being very gentle when I press on the tape because you don't want to distort the, um, the hat because if you mess with or push in on that backing that's under there, it can then shift things. And we can stitch the tape, that's fine, because we'll tear it off later. The tape's not going to bother anything. All right. Let's hit start. Perfect. Right where I wanted it to be. Let's move this camera over here so to wash dishes before I started today, huh? That's fine. It's part of life, right? I'm living in a tiny home. All right, so I'm just going to kind of place this on here, not trying to lock it in, so that if I need to trim out my little threads, I can trim my little threads. And I'm going to peel off my tape. See how it comes right off, no problem. Voila. And I got the patch twisted just a little bit, but that's on me because I placed it a little wrong. But I don't really care. I'm going to leave it and let it go. I could make the line a smidge bigger, not by much, and change it to a black thread, but I like it. I'm just going to go with it and leave it just like that. And that's tweaking the design. So the first one, it might not so well. You might have to adjust the line a little bit and then stitch your second one. But the first one's still going to be good. I mean, I'm still going to put this out for sale because I'm trying to upcycle and use these old damaged hats for something. Because you know this thing wasn't cheap. It's a real tree. So tear out my backing, and I'm ready to go. Look, all of it come out. Ha! Huh, you can even see the upcycling of the old design back there. Oh, well. I'm not really concerned. Because most of the people that are going to buy this, of course, are going to be at a festival or something, and it'll be fine. All right, so there you go. That is putting a patch on the front of a hat and how to set it up and do it. Voila. Do you need something? Okay. Hi. My my fabulous man behind the scenes was checking me out, moving stuff around, seeing if I needed help. Excellent. I'm very happy with this. So this is what I'm going to do later today when I get off of being on live, is I'm going to just continue to make some things and stitch some things and do some hats. Because I have a whole bin full. I'm going to put this in finished products. All right, let me clean up my counter space here real quick. I'll switch back to the overhead. Just going to put away these other ones that I made real quick. All 
All right. Now we're going to shift gears. These are my new labels for putting on machines. I have my, uh, this, we use the glossy stickers with my little information to put on machines. So those are sitting here, and I was putting uh, labels on my oil bottles. So I've been uh, branding my own oil. Where's the camera? Here's the camera. One ounce bottle, refillable. I'll put a link below. Below? Below. Link below. Ha ha. All right, so I can set all these aside. Here's what my stickers look like. Just love stickers. I think everybody loves stickers. Okay. So we're going to start now working with metallic threads and getting metallics to stitch well on your machine. So a lot of people shy away from metallics because they're finicky or they're difficult to use or they break all the time and that just means you haven't set things up properly to run the metallic well. So let's start with the chart. Madeira does a very good job of informing you what you need to use to have successful stitches with their threads. They want you to buy metallics. They want you to use metallics. So on the back of their color charts, even their poly charts, um, the Bermelana chart, all of their color charts on the back tell you what size needle you need to use with that particular type of thread. And it varies. See, the Bermelana has one. You're only going to use one needle, the 100 needle. With the polyester threads, your everyday threads, of course, those are all 75. You get to the thinner stuff, then you're in 65 and a 60 needle. So they tell you what you need to have successful sewing. Same thing with the metallic chart in the back of the metallic chart. And it's going to kind of be hard for you to see, but depending on which style of metallic you get, it's going to have a needle size that is going to work well with that thread. And on this chart, we have all these different sizes, and each one has a different size. Like these first two, the 40 and the 50, will run in a 7511 standard needle. But once you go to the 30 weight, you need a 90. You go to the 20, you need a 100. The 15 uses a 100. The 12 uses a 100 needle. The super twist, which is super fun, uses a 90. So pick the needle that you need for the type of thread that you buy. So if I'm in this chart and I'm like, ooh, ah, these are pretty. Let's see what I have here. All right, let me pick this pretty pink right here. So this pink is a super twist. And on this sample that does not have a needle size, but when you get an actual spool of the thread, they actually are printing the needle size that you need on the little label now. It's kind of, I got a little bit of a glare from the sun coming in over here, sorry guys. Um, so they actually print on the label now what needle you need to have successful stitching with that metallic. So pay attention to your needle. So this one is Super Twist. So if I look up Super Twist, here I am, all of these pretty Super Twists. Here's my pink, which is this pink here, pretty, pretty. I'm going to flip to the back of this chart and see what Super Twist needs. Super Twist needs a 90. It looks like most of these samples. Okay, here's another Super Twist. Crystal. Okay. So this one, I actually have a needle, a number 90 needle 
sample to go with it so that you have successful sewing. You don't have to buy anything with the sample. So when I pass these out, you'll have what you need to get started. Awesome little kits that I got. Okay. This one I obviously opened and used, so the needle's gone. Okay, so we talked about needles. You have to have the right needle. So when we put this purple on to sew with it, we're going to put this 90 needle on. All right. Okay. We have air. All right. Okay. So let's go over to the machine and do that. Jerry, go lay down some results. Go. Go. Not here. Not here. There's no bed here. Go there. Go. Jerry. He always steals the show. Um, okay, so what I want to do is um, put the thread on the machine and get the needle installed that we need to use with the thread. So let's do that. Oh, yeah. The other thing I got to do, take the driver off. Do that as well, real quick. All right. Loosen that up. Because we're going to have to go back to flats, because I'm not going to sew any metallics on these hats. Put my tip on the oil. I know I'm not even using my own branded oil bottle. This one's almost out. Then I'll switch to my branded bottle. Okay, driver, box. Okay, get my little cover swapped out. go. Done. And done. Okay. Put that away for now. Put my arms on because I'm going to switch to a flat hoop. Ready? Okay. So, before I tighten my arms down, I'm going to lock in my hoop, press in, and now I can lock these down. They are positioned correctly. Okay. Excellent. Now we're ready. This will even be the hoop that we use. How about that? Okay. So I am using Oh, I do have some 50. I'm I'm back to digging in the bin. Sorry. I was just looking to see if every sample that came was a super twist. And there's a super twist and then there's a 50. So I guess there's different ones. 50. So the 50s are nice and thin. And those have a... These 
have a large eye. Wow, it actually has a 65 needle in here for this 50 weight because of how thin it is. So I'm just discovering what I have thrown in this box. All right, but we're going to do a super twist because that is going to force me to change the needle. Yeah, I guess I have a few 50s. Excellent. Okay, so this is going to force me to change the needle using the super twist. So this needle is a 9014. It looks like a large eyeball point needle, which is fine. I'm going to use this pretty pink. So this is what makes these threads difficult to stitch with. The nature of how metallics are manufactured makes them a little bit more fragile than your standard thread. Um, so this one has the perfect piece, if I can get the right background color. I don't know if you can see that or not. No, it's pretty difficult to see. But if you take a metallic, Here's all you have to do is untwist it. Give it a little twist in the opposite direction. Let those pieces separate. What you will find is that your metallic thread has a piece of polyester thread as the core, and then it has um, all of these other, in the super twist has a couple of colors, so it has a silver and a red twisted together, there's like, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, there's five strands, six in total if you include the core strand that all of them wrap around, and that's what gives it this light pink color because that one red strand in there. So there are all these tiny little strands that are literally twisted together. So as it's moving through the machine up and down and around, those twists can get a little loose. And because that polyester core and these particular ones have little plastic pieces, if you try to break that, it breaks very easily. You see it almost comes apart like, like butter. So this is a very fragile thread, and that's what makes them difficult to stitch. They can't handle speeds. So some of these you might have to sew slower at like 800 just because the nature of the thread can't handle sewing 1,200 stitches per minute because you're dealing with all these tiny pieces that are twisted. So we're going to adjust our tension and make it looser because the thread breaks easier. And we're going to slow the speed down just so the thread has a chance to move through the machine and come out the other side well, all right, so, um, all right, got the thread. Let me throw all these little bits of paper in the trash, threads in the trash. I got my needles. These are a 90 ballpoint. So we're going to install the proper needle on the spot we put the thread. So let's do that. All right. So, a couple of different ways to put threads up. I am using, like, this is from literally my first machine, so these little cards are 20 years old. But you can also use the little round cups that are developed by Madeira to hold their smaller spools well. Either way will work just fine. I have the cards. And I'm going to put it here on my number nine. And guess what? Mine is unthreaded, so I gotta use the can there. All right, got my air. Put my thread in. Gotta clip it. A fur ball at the end now becomes a problem. All right, metallic. Not hooked. Not hooked, not hooked, not hooked. Okay. Alrighty. Way too much. Oh, well. 
number nine, get this thing threaded. This is the reality of setting up the metallics and not having your thread on. I could have had a color on here and attached it, but I figured I would use a spot that I had unthreaded, and I might just leave the metallic on there for a little while. See, already I've played with the tip of the thread enough that it's already created its own little fur ball again. So i got to trim it again. They're just a little bit more finicky to deal with, these metallics. If I can get it to go through the hole, there we go. Okay, now we are threaded. Stop pick, hooking on things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and in. All right. Now, that's done, that's done. We're ready to do the needle. So I'm going to grab my needle screwdriver. Maybe we'll lower this down just a bit. Here we go. Okay. Number nine. Take out whatever needle I had in there before. Looks like it was a pretty big one. Whatever it is, I can feel there's a burr on it, so I'm going to just throw it away. or dispose of it, or recycle it, however you want to deal with your um, needles. Get my 90, and I'm going to find my long groove. Excellent. Long groove is there. Slide it up in. Long groove facing me. Grab my magnet up here. Make sure I am at my 5 to 20 degrees. Retighten. I have pink ink on the end of my screwdriver. Oh, this guy's leaking. Oh, that's a mess to clean up later. Hi. Hi. Coming to steal the show, Jer Bears? I got no bed for you back here today, buddy. No, you have to go the other way. Okay, needle is installed the magnet up. I will wave my grabber, get it threaded. Uh, All righty. And there we go. That came through. And even just threading it, one of the little strands got just caught on the outside, and I had to go past that fur ball. Most finicky thread I could possibly choose for this tutorial, right? All right. So I present, I'm going to leave a nice long tail when I trim it. So I'm going to leave a little bit extra, maybe an inch and a half on there. Okay, needle is ready. Let me do my bobbin since we're here. I didn't do that earlier. I'm going to take out this and put in a fresh new bobbin for the day. I am currently using a plastic sided bobbin because I want to have the little plastic inserts. I'll show you. Check my tension is good. Put a dab of oil in my hook. This is my morning maintenance that I forgot to do earlier. Okay. Ready to go. So I'll show you my bob and bin over here on the overhead camera. Let me swap that camera.
out quickly, your workspace becomes a mess. Fine. All right. So this is my bobbin bin that I have going on right now. And um, all right. So basically, I have um, these. Uh, it's, it's like an exquisite brand. It's something that I've had for a couple of years that I didn't use. Um, just because sometimes it would give me some issues. Well, with the new X, the new EMT16X, the way that the bobbin thread is trapped now, it sews without a problem. So I'm back to using these up so that I can get, the, see, and I don't have many left, um, so that I can get the little inserts. So I have this left over, this little insert here that I'm saving up and I got blank ones. And once this little compartment is full, I'm not going to save any more because I went through and like wound a bunch of bobbins on a sidewinder. So, and I have these cute little clips to hold them so that nothing comes undone. Some I've already half used um, so that I can, here's a variegated one in here. So, and in here I have the bobbin case to go with these because there's no glue on these like the pre-wounds have. So you'll run into issues where this bobbin will just start free spinning in a normal bobbin case. So if you decide to wind your own bobbins, you'll need a special bobbin case that has a backlash spring inside of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope that you can. It's like that metallic-y kind of weird looking thing in there. So I'll show you one side by side. Here's the one that I just had in the machine. So let's see, I hope you can see that this one has that extra little spring in there. And that is a backlash spring and that prevents the bobbin from going into a free spin kind of a situation on the machine. So you need special bobbins. So I have two, and they're set and ready to go. These are the last colors I tried doing. So I have special bobbin cases for winding my own bobbins. All right, so let's close this. Put this back in the machine. All right, I can now put this away. All right. Why did I lose the machine? Grr. Something has changed with Windows. Grr. Okay, now then, oops, I left one out, okay. Let me see, I know that I have some cutaway back in here. And hooped and ready. So there's some backing for today. Pretty simple. Let me switch the camera. We're going to go to the screen on the computer. All right. I'm just putting the, the hoop on. Okay. So, screen. Let's load something. Um, um, how 
I don't have a whole lot of stuff, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Oh, here's a butterfly. That would be pretty in metallic, yeah? This butterfly would be pretty. Let's see if this one will fit in my hoop. Because it looks like it's a, um... Oh, yeah, it's a one color. So, let me change my hoop. I put the seven inch round. Seven inch round. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Color sequence. Yeah, so see, it's a one color design. So I'm going to pick my number nine, which is where I have that metallic. And we're going to center my machine. Okay. So just because I know that this super twist is going to be finicky, I'm going to leave my speed at 800. I'm not going to try to sew faster than that. And I'm going to raise my tension. And I'm going to raise it pretty drastically. I'm going to put it on the sweatshirt setting because I want that thread nice and loose. And 13 is what comes off when we use the sweatshirt setting. However, we're going to start and we're going to sew and we're going to see how it goes. If we have some thread breaks at 13, we might want to raise this. So this is just a ballpark to get started because this is going to vary depending on which metallic you use. We are using the super twist, which is more finicky than if you were to use the 40 weight or the 50 weight, which is on a standard 7511 needle. Those can be a little bit tighter. They're a little bit more durable. And we can even sew those, I think, at 900. So the super twist, we're staying at 800. We're loosening to 13 to see how it goes. Then we're going to go from there. All right. This is ready. This is ready. My presser foot is ready. I'm threaded. Let's hit start. Switch the camera to the tripod. Let's see if we can get a good angle with our camera to see down in that hoop. There we go. How's that? That looks good. Oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, this is sewing fabulous with the settings we have. And it'll take seven minutes to stitch out this 5,000 stitch design. However, it's going to sew with no problem. Wait, wait, wait. Nope, stop. All right, so I heard it get a little bit different. Look, I've already got a problem here. So I think I'm going to loosen the tension a little bit more. Like I said, it does break easy, but I know that, and so I'm not leaving it. And number nine, and back through the needle. Oh. Let's see if licking works. No. All right, so go through the hole. Come on, I know you can go through the hole. All pieces must go through the hole. Okay, everybody's through. Excellent. Let me go in here and trim these threads here. I lost, it looks like it lost the red. So I'm going to back up. I don't want to mess up my design. And I'm going to go back to my settings. That's the green okay and I'm going to loosen again and I'm going to slow down we'll start with just 50 stitches we'll see if that helps 
swap back to the tripod. There we go. And I'm going to find my coffee. Get a drink of my coffee. Very nice. Coming out very nice. A break. <clears throat> I wasn't paying attention and it went too far. Oh, I seem to be inhaling my coffee today and not drinking it. I'm back up. <clears throat> and I'll start again. I'm going to slow it down to 700. Okay, that's doing better. It's so pretty. So just to give you an idea of what it's like and why we're going to go and lower our speeds. Um, so I had mentioned how the thread is a little bit more finicky and um, it, because of the way they're twisted together and it's made, it's moving and grooving off through the machine as it's going. And So by the time it gets down to the hook and behind that needle, right, you have all that thread behind the needle making that little loop that the hook is catching and stitching. I'm going to do the math. So right now my machine is at 700. <clears throat> so if you just take your calculator, you take 700 and divide it by 60 seconds in a minute because it stitches per minute. 60. I get 11.66, 11 and a half times per second that needle is moving up and down. And that is what we're trying to achieve is catching all of those twisted pieces every stitch. So if it's not catching it because there's all of these furry little threads and it's splitting half of them off and not catching all of it, we're going to slow down so that that stitches per second slows down enough that the machine can catch and the thread can be where it needs to be in order to do the sewing. So this is why metallic threads are more finicky. They can't handle the speed. You have to have the right needle, have your attention loose, and have your speed slowed down for the type of thread you're using. This particular super twist 
is doing fabulous now that I put it at 700. And I didn't change anything with the design. I'm still using the design the way it was created for a standard 40 weight thread. If you have any questions or comments, um, just shoot them down and I will reply even if it's not live. Um, see if I can answer as many questions as you might have. I think I kind of covered everything it takes in order to be successful with metallic threads. <coughs> This is going to be so pretty. I wish I had put it on regular fabric now. This would make a pretty patch. Mm. So then if I start adding fabrics and layering, then my tensions are going to change as well. I'm looking at the chat on the other computer. That's what I'm looking at over there. <clears throat> yeah, this is doing great. So 700 is the magic speed. And 15 is the magic tension for the super twist with my 90 needle. I'm going to make a note and put that in my box. So that the next time I pull out the super twist, I don't have to go through the guessing game anymore. It's that quick and easy. You adjust the speed. I'm going to put the tension at 15. Put in the right needle. I just completely debunked metallic threads. This has 30 seconds left. I am excited to see this butterfly. All right, let's see if I can drink another sip of coffee without inhaling it. <clears throat> Jerry is trying to herd us together. Drew's outside. He wants to come in to get me to go outside. He wants Drew to come in. We all need to be inside or we all need to be outside. Okay, yay, it's done. Okay, we're going to see what this looks like. I'm going to get up off the floor. All right, I'm going to go in here real quick and trim out my little tails. Before I do the big review, this is so pretty. And there's a start tail there and a start tail. Oh, no, that one was already cut. Pretty, sparkly. Let's see if I can get the light to shimmer off of it. Super twist. Metallic threads, voila, stitched beautifully. I guess the auto zoom isn't really working. That's okay. There's the sparkle. Got to get the light at the right angle. Metallic butterfly. Pretty, pretty. So, metallics. This was done using the super twist back looks and feels very nice we were using a 90 needle oh it is auto focusing yay okay oh i just lost the needle <clears throat> okay okay 90 needle, super twist thread. Switch the cameras. Hello. All right, just to recap, we're going to do this little recap. I was using yeah. 
He's fine. All right. I was using a super twist. Oh, here's the chart. So this is from the Madeira super twist. Oh, it's upside down. I keep forgetting upside down. Super twist. And in this, I'm actually in the super twist category, which is a 30 weight thread. On the back of the chart, it tells me super twist, 30 weight thread, 90 needle. Settings on my software. We were running at a tension of 15, nice and loose for the thread. And we got a great stitch out when we slowed it down to 700. So from here on, I know that those are going to be the numbers I need on the machine to get a good sew out. Yes, sir. Oh, how does it hold up in the wash? Okay. Overhead. There we go. How does it hold up in the wash? So these different metallics um, will hold up differently. Um, standard washing machine dryer on medium is going to um, maintain the metallic the best. You don't want to use any high heat and um, it does not hold up to uh, dry cleaning because of the steam and the heat that they use to make sure there's no wrinkles in your dry cleaning. It doesn't last long. Um, when you do that, it just will, will either melt the plastic ones that are made of actual like plastics to get the colors or the metallic ones because it's like a film that's on there, it can actually come off. So <clears throat> it says, let's see, these have a little symbol for 90 degrees Celsius, so they can't handle heat. But I, you, generally when you're using metallics, you don't want to put it on something you're going to dry clean. just because of the nature of the way that, um, the metallics are made. But anything that I've got it on, standard wash, no hot water, and dryer, medium heat. Okay. We've done a recap, so that's good. I am going to just slide all this stuff into this bin. Get rid of the metallic so that we can switch gears and swap over to the Bermalana thread mess. Put my chart away. I'll also try to make sure there's a link to the threads and the charts from Madeira, but it's kind of hard. You have to log into their website um, to get pricing and stuff. So you have to create an account. If you haven't already, um, okay, metallics have exploded out of my bin, but I'm going to give away all of those samples, so good enough. Okay, <clears throat> put that over on the floor. Now we're going to shift gears, and we're going to swap over to the Bermalana threads. So these are all of the cones that I have bought because I fell in love with Bermalana threads. Um, these are what's left of the samples that I haven't given out yet. And again, <clears throat> we are dealing with a completely different type of thread. This thread is a wool thread. Everything I have is wool. Milana 12. Yeah, wool, wool, wool. I don't have any cottons. So in their color chart, they actually have, um, in the Bermalana chart, they have two different types of Bermalana that you can get. They have a um, wool, which is the standard Bermalana, which is wool. And then they have now some cottons if you're wanting to go cotton. Depends on what type of fiber you're wanting to use. But they all act the same because of the way they're made. So again, 
the first thing we need to do is look at what size of needle we're going to need. Doesn't help. It's the glare coming in the window. Um, for this thread. So it's not wanting to focus. All right, he's going to check the camera, see if it auto focuses. Well, it's not the brightness that I need, it's focus. This one doesn't auto focus like the one on the tripod. No. Okay. Especially not when you're in the middle of using it. Okay. No problem. Well, not a focus. We tried. Anyways, <clears throat> for Milana, the type of thread. And you can see, look at this thread. I mean, look at how thick this thread is. You can tell. I'll get an example of a regular standard 40 weight thread. Okay, here is your standard 40 weight thread. If you can even see it in my hand. Well, it's got to be in my hand. Hold on. Right? Pretty thin, standard thread. Hard to tell. My fingers, wrong color. Here we go. Color. Standard 40 weight thread. Here. Now, I'll put this Bermelana on here. You can immediately tell the difference. The thread is thicker. So Bermalana is a fabulous thread if you're wanting to try to get a hand look on your stuff. And I have a sample from um, one of the trade shows when the Bermalana became a thing. This is a tote bag. I've been carrying it for quite a while. But the entire guitar and Rockstar is all done in Bermalana, and it feels like it's got texture, it's furry, it's fuzzy, it's, you know, it's got that hand look, but we all know it's got bob and thread on the back, so it wasn't. For an example, big design. So, it would be great for, you know, a jacket back design if you're trying to get a look for something or a feel of something. Like I bought this gray so that I could do like a timber wolf and have that timber wolf uh, look like he had all the variations of color as he was like, you know, if he was running through the woods kind of thing. So fabulous colors. Um, also, um, this is chenille. So chenille is the uh, process of making loops. So it makes a loop on the top of your garment, on the top of your garment, which is what normally we don't want in the embroidery world is loops on the top of our garment. However, this machine, our EMT-16 or XT or XTS, whatever version you have, even the red and white Amayas will do this. You just need the proper needle. Your design must be digitized for this fabric. And we're going to pull up this teddy bear and look at what is done in the teddy bear to achieve this raised carpet effect. So hard to see. It's raised and textured. I think you can see it best in his little nose because it, it looks embossed, his little nose. So, you have to have the thread, have to have the right needle. The needle size that are used for this is a 100 needle. So, this is even bigger than the needles we were using for the Super Twist, which was a 90. So, I'm going to have to put a 100 needle in the machine in order to use this. So, um, so we'll put these over on the machine. And I'm going to cut this 
this up so that I can maybe reuse this. This is again not quite big enough. Definitely big enough for one layer. That's fine. Okay. I got so many threads. Maybe what we'll do is because I have this blue bear. Maybe what I'll do is put this brown on to make a brown bear for a sample. I'm going to trim off all those extra threads because that's just a mess. We're going to put the brown on. We have our needles here. I'm just going to sling them all around, pick out one. Got here with our sample pieces. Okay, thread, needles. Now then I will work on hooping. And I think I want to get a piece of fabric. So I want to keep this test stitch. <clears throat> I have a wonderful pink here. Let's do the pink. quite big enough for this hoop. <coughs> Excuse me. It will fit in a five and a half. Okay, so we're going to switch hoops to a little bit smaller. That one away. My fabric, and I'm going to cut me a piece of this pretty pink. And it makes it big enough I can use two layers. I want to be really stable. I love using two layers of cutaway when I'm doing um, anything that's wearable because I know that the two layers are going to maintain uh, my stitches even after laundering. I've been able to wear some embroidery with two layers of cutaway on it for several years through washing and drying, wash, hundreds of washes and dries because I stabilized well. And this is going to be a sample that I'm going to hold on to. This one I only did one, and so you can kind of see it's already a little starting to pucker just a little bit from being handled. So I want to double that up. All right, so we are hooped. Save that piece of backing for later. All right, let's go to the machine and let's pull up this bear. I say it's bear. I'm like touching him over there. And we'll work on software next. I forget that I have to click the mouse to wake it up. To switch screens. Okay. Wake up my computer and we're going to go to Design Shop. So we are going to open this bear and I think I have him on my desktop. Yes, here he is. Okay, 
So here is our cute little bear. Doesn't really look like much on the screen, but that's okay. What matters is what it looks like when we stitch him out. So in this design, we have a couple of different things. His eyes, his nose, his mouth, his little freckles, the outline around his muzzle, and the outline around the edges were designed to be in regular poly thread. So we're going to make sure that we select those colors. And I do have a brown on the machine. Okay, perfect. And we're going to do his nose and eyes and things in black. So I'm going to click on the black and make sure. All right, so that is his muzzle. I'm going to see that is some walking stitches. The first one. Let me look at this. Complex still. Then we have the complex still. Okay, so we've got the color of his, of his muzzle. Looks like it was intended to be two different shades. That's fine. We're going to just do one shade. We have a single line, which is going to be that and that. And then all of our blue is going to be poly threads as well. But we're going to make his dots and all of his things like that black. We're going to outline him in a dark brown. Perfect. His muzzle is going to be the same color of brown, which is the 3831, which is that one. So now those are one. And these two are going to be the same color of brown as well. So I'm just going to click on that color. So I have one color for his nose. Outside, I have brown for here, and I have a black for his detail. All right, so now I've got him colored the way I want him. But what we're going to look at is what these complex fill settings are. Because yeah, if you can see, and I'll zoom in a little bit, it looks like tiny little squares. The complex fill setting has a density of 15. So that means these lines that go from this way to this way are 15 points uh, away from each other, which is 1.5 millimeters if you're using millimeters. And that will allow enough space for the thickness of the thread to go from one to the other and have coverage and not overlap. So that is our top fill density. The uh, underlay is a fill with a 16 density. So the underlay is just like a fraction wider, just so you get a little bit of irregularity from the underlay to the top stitch. And these two layers are what's going to give us that um, loopy effect, that stitching effect. So if you are wanting to use the Bermelana thread in a design, you need to change your fill parameters to have an underlay with a density of 16 and a top stitch of 15 in whatever design it is you choose to do. Check for any comments. No comments. Okay. All right, so that is how simple the design is to set up. Change your densities. So this file was created. Let's see. Uh, OK. Let's get our zoom back out. So what would that look like if we created a new design in a new file? You will have your fill tool and you're going to make your shape. And I'm just going to do a box, enter, no hole, enter, start point, stop point, give us a stitch direction. Okay, but your standard fill is not ready by default. We need to go into those properties 
and make some changes. So I'm just going to double click over here, over our complex fill, which brings this up. I can go into that density now and make that a 15 for my top stitch. Ah, it's starting to already look better. All right, now we go to our underlay. And the auto underlay is fabulous for your standard poly threads, but it's a little too much. As you can see, it's showing two fills. So we're going to turn that feature off. And we're going to turn off one of these fills, underlays. We don't need that. We only need one. And it has a density of 50. Interesting. We want that to be 16. So it looks really, really full. It doesn't quite look right. Let's turn this one off. Turn this one on. Hmm. It looks very dense to me. Maybe it's the size of the design? Hmm. hmm. Yeah, it's just the size. Okay. Underlay, fill. That looks good. I will stitch it out and see how it goes. But we're going to do the bear first. Complex fill. Top density is 15. Underlay density is 15. Excellent. Yeah, that's everything. That's the way it should be. Looks good. All right, we're going to switch back over, though, to our bear. Because that's what I want to sew out today, is the bear. All right, so I've got all my colors set. We have our, oh yeah, see, I can see now the, the squares. Um, let's load it to our machine. Uh, if you're working with version 11 Design Shop and version 11 of OS, there's a quick load design button here. Any other versions, um, you, 10 and below, you're going to do a file machine load design. Load design. Okay, so we got it loaded. Let's switch back over. Okay. So we're here now. So we have our design loaded. That's the first step. Second step is set our colors. So, um, oh, we can't set our colors until we know where the Bermelona is going to be on the machine. So let's go do that now so that we know where to set the colors. Let me look at the machine real quick. I'm going to do the Bermelona on position 12 on my machine. So. The first one is going to be our, <coughs> excuse me, Vermilana, which is going to be position 12. Okay, so everything that's in that light tan color is going to be Vermilana. Then I have nine. Whoa, this is going to be the outline, which is my brown I have on that number. And then this one is going to be our little details. We'll make those black. Perfect. He's looking very cute. All right. Check mark here. Now we have our color set. Hoop. We need to swap our hoop out because I switched it for the 5.85. Perfect. Now we're going to leave our tension at the 15. And we're going to leave our speed at 700, and I'm going to start to sew. And um, that's uh, actually going to be fine. But what we have to do now is this color that is underneath, this light color that's going to be our Bermelana, needs to be told to be loopy. So that's going to be this first color, Needle 12. In the software, there is a button. This is a chenille for a micro chenille, which is using the 40 weight thread. And these bigger little loops, who are supposed to represent loops, 
are for the bermolana thread. So this is going to tell the machine to feed extra thread to give us those loops. So we're going to left click and drag this icon onto our bermolana needle, which is 12. And you can see the little bubbles that are created there. This is what is going to make those loops. We're adding thread here on top of the standard what we have of 15. It adds even more. So we have all of that set up. We have the colors. We have the hoop. We have speed. We're ready to go to the machine and set the machine up, install the needle, install the thread, and sew. All right. Let me swap the camera. That looks pretty good. Let's raise this one up just a touch because we're going to be up here for a second. There we go. All right. So we're on position 12. So this one I'm going to switch out using the quick tie method. Take my brown and pull my old thread and attach my Bermelana gently, 12, and it's only threaded to here. Okay, fabulous. And I can tell already that it's pulling just a little bit stiffer because it's pulling, because that wool kind of holds to itself, so it's already pulling a little bit harder through the machine. So that's fine. We understand and know. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take my thread tip and make it a little higher. Oh, yeah, that pulls a little bit better. See that, what I did? I just raised this up so it pulls a little bit better off of the spool. It doesn't hold as much as, as it was when it was low because it's making a real hard jump there. Yeah, perfect. All right. Now then, let's get this threaded. Stop yakking. Okay, one more spot. All right, now we're here. Get it in. Everything is good. Now we're going to put the needle in. I picked position 12 because it had no needle in here. Okay. Grab my needle screwdriver, make sure that is loose. It is. Okay. Got my needle, make sure my long groove is facing me, get up in there, get my magnet, then I'm going to make sure I'm really at that five degrees now, I want it to be nice and straight-ish, five degrees is straight-ish. Needle is in, magnet goes back up safe. Grab her out, and let's see if we can get this needle threaded. So if you think the, the super twist metallic is difficult to thread, this is a fur ball now. So this one, even harder. I'm gonna lick it, and I don't normally lick. Okay, lick it and trim it. Okay. 
can't see. I'm trying. It's a big, thick fur ball. But the 100 needle is the largest needle we can use on our machine. So we just got to get it in there. Come on. Ugh. I feel like I'm blind. This is the reality of it, though. That's why we do it live. Come on. If I can just get the angle right, it'll go in. There we go. There we go. All right. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I just had to get the angle right of the thread. Now I'm in. Okay. I'm going to tuck that in and give this a little bit extra space. So I'm going to give it almost two inches. Just needs a little bit extra space. What is this guy? Get rid of that. Okay. All right. We have our thread. We have our needle. And let's see. The brown for needle number three is threaded and good. And my black, which is on needle number two, is threaded and good. Those are ready. Bobbin is ready. We did that earlier. Now we're ready to put the hoop on and sew. Let's see how it goes. Make sure that we trace first. Just to double check. Perfect. As a loopy.
So is this something you can help her with? So loopy, and it's sewing fabulous. We haven't had any thread breaks or issues. We got the speed and the tension right. We are going 700 stitches per minute right now, which is sewing with no problems. Yay! So it's going to take about 10 minutes to do this bear. Once we switch to the polyester thread, I will actually change the speed and have it go a little bit faster then. Trying to get down in the hoop a little bit better. So hard to see this on the video. Thank you. All right, we're just stitching at the moment. My turtle would look good in that. Yes, my turtle would look great in this. Absolutely. We'll just have to go in and make all the proper changes. Now it's going back and doing that second layer, building those loops up. And I'm having lunch. Hi. Everything's working great. It's spooling off of the spool grape, feeding through the machine well. I haven't had any thread break. It's going to be so cute. Jerry's here because I was eating. 
Come over here. Come here. Yeah, hi. Mama was eating. Lydia, hi. Good morning. It's so nice to see you today. Hi, Lydia. How are you? We are doing Bermelana threads. Earlier, we did metallic threads and how to stitch a patch onto a hat and set that file up. So make sure you go back and watch what you missed this morning. So we're done with our Bermelana. So I think I'm going to increase the speed now because the regular polys can run faster. I spoke too soon, apparently. All right, wait, hold on. I've got a break. It's tight, it's tight. Ah, oh, haha, <laughs> it's up here. My cone thread is stuck underneath. Didn't check this before I started on this brown. There we go. Now we won't have a thread break. Ha ha. Yes, so earlier we set up a stitch file how to stitch a patch onto a hat. And then we worked with metallic threads and how to get those successful. And now we're sewing with vermilana thread. And we're making a little bear. Basically, I'm redoing my little sample bear that I carry around in this blue color. And we're redoing him in the browns. So he looks more like a bear. Make sure the bobbin thread is good. All right, let's go. Yeah, now we're doing a thousand. We can go much faster for this part. So welcome. Make sure you um, give a thumbs up to the video. All right, I'm going to put these needles back. Okay. There we go. Ah, I'll show you, Miss Lydia. We attached this patch onto this hat um, over a uh, logo that was on there that messed up. So I've saved all of my damaged hats over the years and have a huge bin. Big bin full of damaged hats that have mess ups. And so I'm going to upcycle these hats and save them from going into the landfill, brand new item. And you know, it's a real tree, this guy, so he was expensive. So I'm saving landfill stuff, turning otherwise garbage into a sellable product that I can do. And I'm just going to have a bunch of random patches that's going to maybe match what I'm doing. Like this logo is too big for this particular patch, so I'll make something bigger to go over this one. Or you could start with new hats, new patches, and you're just attaching them on for a client that wants as many as they're going to want to want. This one, yeah, see that's pretty big. 
So all kinds of weird logo mess ups. So every hat's going to have a custom size patch made for it. So this is what I'm going to do this afternoon is play and have fun with this. When we're done with the Bermalana, we will be finished for the day. So then you'll be able to go back and watch what we did earlier. Also, Miss Lydia, I'm putting together a boot camp for digitizing. And we're going to have classes where you get to travel and come and sit in a classroom. And we all learn all of these cool digitizing things as well. So keep an eye out for that. He's looking so cute. The cute factor is killing me. He's almost done. He's got about 15 seconds. A couple of more little pokey dots on his cheeks. Yeah, I decided to do my live today on a Monday because for the last couple of weekends, I've been training people who have day jobs that are starting embroidery businesses. And then they're going to slowly grow until they can replace their salaries and change their careers. So we're on a Monday. And I'm going to go back through as well and edit these down into the different segments and um, post those separately so that you don't have to go through, what are we at? Two and a half hours of information to find what you're looking for. It's done! And it's just so hard to see the texture of this bear. i to trim one thread. Vermilana. It's all about speed. It's all about tension. And it's all about having the right needle. You have to loosen your tension, slow down your speed, and have the proper needle for the thread. And you'll have great sewing. We had zero thread breaks with this Vermilana thread. So have the brown. And you can see, I'm just going to demonstrate one more time, exactly how easy this thread breaks. So, speed, tension, needles, bermelana. Have fun with this. Make money with this. Have a fabulous, wonderful afternoon. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Yes. Okay, so let me get the camera a little bit better. Okay, so don't forget, if you like the machine that you've seen in my videos, we are using the Melco EMT16X machine. You can also look at and get the Bravo X machine. If you want to click in the link below, maybe it's not a link. I don't think it's a link, actually. I have the sales rep who is handling all of the online YouTube sales listed below. His name is Todd Eggersman. His phone number and his email address is listed below. If you want more information for the machine, stop by, give him a call. Don't forget to mention my name, Juliet, and that you saw the machine on YouTube. And... Have a wonderful day. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. More fun and exciting live videos of what it's like in reality to do all these projects. See you soon. Have a good day. Well, I got to 